This is everything I take with me on my wedding photography shoots. So we'll start off straight away with the Canon R6 Mark II, my go-to workhorse of a beast camera. I absolutely love it and I use it for the majority of the day. I'll probably shoot around 3,400 photos just on that camera alone and only a couple hundred on my other one that we'll get into in a minute. But I love this camera so much, mainly because of the autofocus. I've got to admit, that's the main reason why I love it so much. The ergonomics really do play a part in it as well with the thumb stick and the wheel because it's just so easy to focus with it the eye tracking is unbelievable the fast frames per second is amazing it's low megapixels as well 24.2 not majorly low it's kind of like a perfect middle ground i say but it's really good in low light as well and it doesn't take too much memory card space when you are transferring your photos over to your hard drive because when you're taking like 4,000 photos per shoot that's going to be a lot of photos and a lot of gigabytes on your hard drive so that's why I love the R6 Mark II so much because it is great in low light it's great autofocus the ergonomics are amazing the fast frames per second are really nice as well it's really nice to use and it's just overall an amazing camera if I'm doing room prep I mainly pair that up with the 35 millimeter this is great for just normal everyday candids and also like room prep just because it's just perfect it's got f1.8 aperture so it's really good in low light as well if you pair that with the canon r6 mark ii you're going to be getting some amazing low light photos i might mix it up and actually put the 50 mil on again 1.8 aperture and it just gives that a little bit more separation in the background and compression and i do love the 50 mil look just overall the 35 mil is great and just these two whatever i'm feeling on the on the day on the time i'll just be mixing up between these two lenses for the start groom prep and any everyday candids i've normally got one of these lenses on one of my cameras at all times you can obviously use my next lens which i use the canon r6 mark ii with four candids and i use this for candids so much as well and that is the beast itself the canon ef 7200 f 2.8 this lens is the lens that you need to get it's just so good it's so good for everything a ceremony if you're far away it's just great for isolating subjects during the speeches this is the best lens for wedding photography in my opinion i absolutely love it and i would love the rf version because it's smaller and lighter but the ef version does not like disappoint it's so good it's so sharp it's so amazing and if you don't have this lens already please try and save up and get it if you can get it used like i did you can save so much money on this lens so i recommend getting the old version used if you can because this lens can do so many different jobs in just one lens it's so good and i'm always pairing this up with the r6 mark ii for the majority of the day as soon as it hits the ceremony this doesn't leave my r6 mark ii for the majority of the day until night time and this just goes everywhere with me for the sunset portraits, for the couple portraits, the ceremony, the speeches. This is always on my R6 Mark II with the fast frames per second. It's just, and the autofocus latches on. It pairs so well with the EF to RF adapter. And this lens is just a joy to use. And it's just so, so good. The other camera that I bring with me all the time is my Canon EOS R with the battery grip. You don't need the battery grip. The only reason why I do bring the battery grip is because I don't have to worry about changing batteries all the time because the R6 Mark II is so good at battery life and I'd imagine the EOS R is as well. But just having the battery grip, obviously I don't have to worry about changing batteries. I've not changed batteries once using this camera because of the battery grip and because I'm not using it as much, mainly because the autofocus isn't good. I probably wouldn't recommend this camera for weddings just mainly because of the ergonomics. If you actually look at the back of the camera, there's this annoying touch bar, which I recommend you turn off if you do have it because it just gets in the way. There's no joystick, there's no back wheel. And the only way to change your focus point is by tapping the screen. And yes, if it's like this and it's up to your eye looking through the viewfinder, you can use the top right hand side to actually move the focus point like the joystick on the Canon R6 Mark II. However, it's nowhere near the same. And if it's out to the side and you're like this holding the lens there is no way of changing the focus point unless you actually tap on the screen and it's just so annoying and it gets in the way and it just slows you down so much but anyway this is just my backup camera 30 megapixels it can take stunning photos it's got really slow frames per second though so i don't really use it for the ceremony that much just to get some like wides with the 35 mil this is where i actually pair my primes normally with this lens like my 35 or my 50 but it's mainly the 35 for the rest of the day when i have my 7200 on my r6 mark ii so that's normally the combo i go for the 35 mil prime and the 7200 it can take stunning photos and 
and overall I just really do still love this camera even though it has a lot a lot of flaws but I always do say that this is a great photography camera and it is because you can take amazing photos it's just not the best in some ways and the R6 Mark II really does show that. Another thing that I normally take with me if we're allowed uh, especially for the group photos is my DJI Mini 2. This is great just to get everyone who's attended the wedding in the shot basically a massive group photo in front of the venue it's also to get venue photos as well from up above it can create some stunning different perspectives as well on the venue and just everyone else in a group together you can get some really nice group shots especially if you get them to cheer or anything like that i don't use it loads i only get like a couple shots of it but that's all you need with this drone and i did probably recommend you get like maybe the dji mini 3 pro now if you can but it's up to you this does the job perfectly and i do love it for that moving on to the cake cutting the first dance and just the disco at the end this is the lens that i use loads and pretty much all the time and that's a 16 to 35 millimeter f4 the f2.8 version will work 100 however i only just got the f4 mainly because i wanted image stabilization for video and it was a lot cheaper it doesn't matter which one you get really i'll just say any 16 to 35 mil f2.8 will obviously help more in low light so i do recommend probably that for photography i love this because especially when everyone's dancing in the disco time and the first dance you can get really up close with everyone and if you shoot in the 16 mil you can get so many people in and it just gets you like involved in the actual like disco dancing so when the couples do look back on the photos it really does look like like they're there again in the actual dancing because you're so close to everyone again as well if you just want to get someone isolated a little bit more or two people dancing that's when i punch into 35 mil just to get a little bit more tighter but overall this lens is great however it won't be great at all especially if it wasn't for this beast of a flash here which is the godox v1 this flash is amazing for loads of different things really. Like you can use it for so many different things on the wedding day, but I do mainly use it on camera during the disco time, especially the first dance, just so the couple is exposed perfectly. And it just makes the photos look way more professional and way better overall using the flash. Now I use it on camera to actually bounce it off the ceiling, especially if it's quite a low ceiling and it's white, it's great for that anyway. It's really easy to use. You just literally connect it to your camera and you just start shooting. That's why I love this combo, the 16 to 35 mil with this lens, because you can get some amazing wedding photos when they are dancing, because at the end of the day, they're probably the best photos for a lot of people. When everyone's a little bit drunk, when everyone's having a lot of fun, that's when you wanna go back and look at them photos. And this flash really does help with that, especially with this lens as well. Flashes are also really great as well just for like the couple portraits and that's mainly everything i take with me to my wedding photography shoots sometimes oh there is one more thing actually i've just remembered and that's because i couldn't fit it in here really at the minute but that's my dji action 3 now obviously you don't probably need this at all but if you are like a youtuber or if you do want to promote your business overall so maybe to be fair getting one of these will actually be quite good even if you're not a youtuber to be fair because if you just get one of these i've got this little adapter i've got my camera cage and I literally just put this on one of my cameras, magnetize it straight onto that, and then I can get some really nice BTS of me actually shooting the couple. If you actually put it on top of the camera, you can see the lens in the shot, and also in the background, you can actually see the couple like posing or just, you can see the whole day basically. So you can see the candids, you can see the first dance, and then if you show the final shot after, which is what I'm gonna start doing, and you'll probably see in this video already, if you post stuff like that on Instagram, so if you've got like a wedding photography page and you wanna actually promote your wedding photography business, or even if you put it on your website, actually getting some BTS shots using like an action camera and then showing the final image. I think that's just a better overall way to do it, in my opinion. Obviously, it's not right or wrong, but I just do think it adds that extra little bit to your actual wedding portfolio, and it just gives that extra little bit of personality as well. I think you can connect to that photographer a little bit more when you are looking through their portfolio. I reckon that couple could actually, like, it's different. Like, it will stand out to them. This is actually a really cool tool to actually get some nice BTS, and you never know, it could actually help with your wedding photography business, and that's one reason why I did actually buy this, because that's what I want to do. That's everything I actually do take with me on my wedding photography shoots so if you didn't enjoy this video why not hit that like button and subscribe for more videos like this in the future and thank you very much for watching and if you did enjoy this video i actually go more in depth of the canon r6 mark ii when i shot my first wedding in this video right here so make sure you go watch that video next